What I'm suggesting is this committee is corrupt because this is a kangaroo circuit circus, and I will note we had 15 Senate Democrats, including six members of this committee, send a letter to the Appropriations Committee threatening to cut off the funding for security at the Supreme Court. The left is willing to threaten the lives of the justices. Justice Samuel Alito this weekend in the Wall Street Journal said that the attacks directed at the justices are making them targets of assassination. Three. Do you think it's appropriate to threaten the security of, of justices of the United States and their families in order to get them to comply with the wishes of this body? No. Have you, have you heard of something like this being done before? I have not. I haven't either. And I have to say, at a time when we have had three different credible assassination attempts or threats against justices. We still have people illegally going to the justices' homes to attempt to influence their decisions in cases. Justice Clarence no. Thomas appeared before this committee in one of the most disgraceful performances by the Senate Judiciary Committee in our nation's history. Justice Thomas rightly described the treatment he got from then Chairman Joe Biden and Senate Democrats as a, quote, high-tech lynching. It is sad to see 30 years later this committee is again engaged in the same despicable tactics. Senate Democrats and their lapdogs in the media are engaged in a twofold political campaign. Number one, to delegitimize the Supreme Court of the United States because they are angry that there are a majority of constitutionalists on the court. But number two, very directly, this is a political campaign designed to smear Justice Clarence Thomas. And the reason is simple. The left despises Clarence Thomas. And they do not despise him because he's a conservative. The left despises Clarence Thomas because he is a conservative African-American. Here's what Clarence Thomas said at that confirmation hearing. He said, if you are a free-thinking African-American, quote, you will be lynched, destroyed, and caricatured by a committee of the U.S. Senate. Well, in three decades, that hasn't changed, and it's gotten worse. And to be clear, here's the left's view. I point to one article just three weeks ago. The Democrats need to destroy Clarence Thomas's reputation They'll never successfully impeach him, but so what? Make him a metaphor for every insidious thing the far right has done to this country. That's what the left is trying to do. And I will tell you, if you look at the next, the next poster board, the left has repeatedly attacked Clarence Thomas with a racism. This is a magazine cover that showed Justice Scalia, every bit as conservative as Clarence Thomas, but he's portrayed as the master, and Clarence Thomas, in a bigoted attack, is portrayed as shining his shoes. I'll show you another one to give you a sense of the racist vitriol from the left. Here's a racist caricature of Clarence Thomas, lawn jockey for the far right. This is the bigoted contempt the left has. I'll show you another, uh, another magazine cover. Offensively, this is how the left views Clarence Thomas. Now, it's important for people at home to understand this is not about judicial ethics. You can take those down. This is not about judicial ethics. This is not about rules that should apply to judges across the board. We could have a reasonable discussion about that. This is about applying a double standard to Clarence Thomas and only Clarence Thomas. The attack that my Democrat colleagues breathlessly repeat is that Clarence Thomas stayed at the vacation home of a very close friend of his, a successful Texas businessman, flew on his plane and went on his yacht. Well, if that's the standard, going and traveling and being paid for by others, then guess what? Just about every Supreme Court justice has done so and done so in much greater numbers. Justice Thomas was appointed in 1991. In the time since then, he's taken 109 reported trips, five international trips. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was appointed in 1993, two years later. In the time she was on the court, she took 157 trips, including 28 international trips. Mr. Payne, yes or no, do you think Ruth Bader Ginsburg was corrupt? No. Nor do I. 
Ruth Bader Ginsburg was not alone. Justice Stephen Breyer, appointed the year later in 1994, took 233 reported trips, including 63 international trips. Again, yes or no, Mr. Payne, do you think Stephen Breyer was corrupt? No. Nor do I. I would point out Justice Kagan has done the same thing, Justice Sotomayor has done the same thing, and yet none of my Democrat colleagues care because this is a political attack directed at a justice they hate. And by the way, let's spend a moment focusing on Justice Stephen Breyer, a delightful human being, someone I know personally, someone who served decades on the court. Justice Stephen Breyer repeatedly traveled on the penny of a prominent Democratic billionaire, the Pritzker family. Now, J.B. Pritzner is the Democrat governor of the state of Illinois, from which our chairman hails. I, I would be shocked if the chairman of this committee has not had multiple meals with the Pritzker family. Justice Breyer was a longtime member of the board that awarded the Pritzker Architecture Prize. Now, what did that mean? That meant Justice Breyer traveled on the dime of these Democrat billionaires, in 2019, Justice Breyer traveled to New York City, to Vancouver, and Paris. In 2018, Justice Breyer traveled to Ireland and Spain. In 2016, he traveled to New York, Spain, and France. In 2013, he traveled to Norway, Sweden, Denmark. In 2012, he traveled to Beijing and to London. All of this paid for by the Pritzker Foundation. Now, none of my Democrat colleagues are mad about this, and let me be clear. I'm not suggesting Justice Breyer is corrupt. What I'm suggesting is this committee is corrupt because this is a kangaroo circuit circus. And I will note, we had 15 Senate Democrats, including six members of this committee, send a letter to the Appropriations Committee threatening to cut off the funding for security at the Supreme Court. The left is willing to threaten the lives of the justices. Justice Samuel Alito this weekend in the Wall Street Journal said that the attacks directed at the justices are making them targets of assassination. This is disgraceful. Every senator who signed this letter should be embarrassed. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that this letter be admitted into the record and also that, that, that the interview with Justice Alito from this we weekend be entered into the record. Democrats can have disagreements based on law, but this attempt to delegitimize the court, this attempt to personally smear Clarence Thomas is dishonest, and everyone in the media echoing it is participating in a shameful reprise of 1991's high-tech lynching. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all of the witnesses for being here. I want to talk about this letter that I think 11 Democrat senators signed dated March 31st, 2023. It's to members of the Appropriations Committee. I'm just looking here at the signatories. It includes quite a number of members of this committee, as well as others. This is a very interesting letter to me. And I just want to look a little bit at some of the language and what these senators are, are asking for. They say that Congress uh, ought to impose a code on the Supreme Court. They say Congress has broad authority to compel the Supreme Court to institute reforms. Compel. And then they go on and say Congress's appropriations power is one tool for achieving these changes. Compel. Now, we're going to compel the court. We're going to use the appropriations power. How to do it? Well, they're, they're very specific. Congress should withhold appropriations. Withhold appropriations. And then they go on to say nothing stops Congress from treating the judiciary any differently than any other entity of government when faced with judicial recalcitrance. So here we have judicial recalcitrance. These darn judges won't do what we tell them to do, so we're going to compel them to do what we want, and we're going to use the appropriations power. All right, what appropriations? Well, they ask for $10 million to be withheld. That's an interesting number to me. $10 million. $10 million. Why $10 million? Well, Let's have a look at the Supreme Court's 2024 budget request. What do we see? Well, we see $4 million of requests for security funding from the CHIPS Act. $4 million. Then we see an additional $6 million of more security funding that the court is asking for. This is their 2024 budget request. The Supreme Court is asking for $4 million in security funding from one source and another $6 million over and above. Four plus six equals 10. $10 million of security funding 
that the court is specifically asking for this year in their budget request. And that just happens to be magically the exact same number that my Democrat colleagues want to deny the Supreme Court unless they stop their judicial recalcitrance and submit to the compulsion of this body. So in other words, the threat is we will deny you security unless you do what we want. Let me say it again. We will deny you security unless you do what we want. We had an assassin come to the home of Justice Kavanaugh and try to murder him. We have had credible threats on the lives of other justices. And now members of this body say we will deny you security for you, your families, your children, unless you do what we want. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Judge Mukasey, can I just ask you, longtime distinguished jurist, former attorney general of this country, do you think it's appropriate to threaten the security of, of justices of the United States and their families in order to get them to comply with the wishes of this body? No. Have you, have you heard of something like this being done before? I have not. I haven't either. And I have to say, at a time when we have had three different credible assassination attempts or threats against justices, we still have people illegally going to the justices' homes to attempt to influence their decisions in cases. No one has been prosecuted for those violations. We have constant threats and danger to their children. We had radicals tell, uh, post publicly the school location of one of the justices' children. And in that context, to say that we will deny them millions of dollars in security funding unless they do what this body wants, I think is the height of irresponsibility. And frankly, I, I, I can't believe that I'm seeing it. I guess it's just of a piece with what we've seen from the majority leader who said that, what was it? Schumer, he said, Kavanaugh and, and Gorsuch, that you will reap the whirlwind. Well, I guess we're, we're reaping the whirlwind now, that they're just on their own unless this judicial recalcitrance stops. I hope that we don't have to see another assassination attempt. I hope we don't have to have a justice actually killed before this body will take judicial security seriously and stop its attempts to coerce an independent branch of government. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since